because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Uh, the International Centre, you did. You said, come back and I'll give you uh, another big performance to get myself into the world title picture. You did. And then I put to you, you know, is it a dream to, to box for a world title at the stadium? And you said, no, it's not a dream to box there. It's a dream to win it and I'm going to win it. Just how excited are you for Saturday night? Now this moment is upon us. Yeah, yeah, we're here, we're here now. It's fight week. Um, you know, I got to see the stadium yesterday and uh, put a huge smile on my face and filled me with a lot of emotion, which is good. Um, but yeah, we're, we're here now. And like you said, I've and, and like Lee said as well, that I've been visualising this and planning for this for, for many years. And that was when I said that thing to Lee, I was still an amateur. So uh, here we are now as a professional. And uh, yeah, we're right at the, the pinnacle. How do you feel uh, now you're at the top table and, and he's here and you, you've seen everything that he's had to say and you've had a chance to take that in? Is there any extra pressure um, building because of the fact that we are in Bournemouth, the fact that they have it um, put more uh, seats in, the capacity is bigger than uh, originally planned? Um, is it motivation or is there you know, good nerves and, and, and pressure there as well? Yeah, for sure. I think there can't be any more pressure on me in, in, in the rest of my career than this Saturday night. It's a first world title fight. It's at home. The whole show is built around me and this event and has been for the last two shows as well that we've done down here. Um, but like I always say, is pressure is a privilege and uh, I'm, I soak it up and the more pressure, the better. Um, but absolutely, there's, there's pressure uh, and a huge amount of excitement as well. Have you felt the power of the fans already? Yeah, I have. I've been living off it from when I boxed Isaac down here last year, and um, um, the, they've been amazing. At any time I'm in Bournemouth, and people see me about, and you know, I'm feeling great energy from the whole town. Um, of the, they've been brilliant. Um, the support's been huge, uh, and at the end of the day, they're the reason that we're able to fill the stadium. They're the ones who, you know, they go work hard, they pay their hard-earned money to to come and watch me, and uh, I go reward them on Saturday night. Lawrence, uh, welcome to Bournemouth. I think it's nine weeks bell to bell um, since David Light. I should just say uh, everybody continues to send their best wishes to David Light, who's recovering in New Zealand. Um, do you actually feel that you should be getting a, a little bit of thanks? It's, it's rare in the modern era that we go nine weeks uh, with elite fighters, world champions boxing uh, back to back like that. This show is happening because the Bournemouth fans, because of Chris Bill Smith, but because you agreed to do it within such a small time frame. Yeah, definitely. It's good to be here. And um, yeah, definitely right. I think um, all of this talk of world title fights and stuff like that wouldn't happen unless I said I'm going to put my world title on the line. Um, no one could put me in that position as a world champion. So it's obviously one that I, I wanted myself uh, and I'm looking forward to this weekend. Did you believe it would happen though? Against The reason I ask that is against Chris Billum smith a former gym mate, uh, under your former trainer in Shane McGuigan. There are a lot of narratives to this. Um, perhaps it didn't look like the obvious fight. Yes, I know. I think the reason why it's obviously more likely is because, as you said, it's been a dream of his for years to box at the Vitality Stadium for a world title. And there was no other world champion that was ready and willing. So it wasn't like I was like the first call or anything like that, or he was even the first call. It's an opportunity arises itself, and when you're ready, you take them. How confident are you? You gave us a great line yesterday that you said, you know, been watching him in the build-up, but now I've seen him in the flesh, I believe that I knock him out. Yeah, I'm extremely confident. I think I'm um, in great, great condition. I'm a great athlete, great boxer. Um, from amateur to professional, um, I've shown time and time again that I'm ready to take the risk and, and do what needs to get done. You know, I became an Olympian, um, very limited fights. I became a British Commonwealth European champion with very limited experience as a pro, won a world title, defended it a few times. So I'm very, very confident in myself and what I've done and accomplished and I'm going to demonstrate why I have done that stuff on Saturday. And what is, why was it yesterday? What, what was it that you saw well, that think, changed your... I think the reality is, when you come to um, outside of mind, me and um, Chris were in the same gym with Shane, and I think when you've been away for a while, you can either tear someone down or build them up in your mind. So I think, for me, I built him up. This guy's a monster. He's going to be throwing punch after punch for round after round. Then I saw him and I just remembered it's just a guy. They might have done the same or the opposite and said, Lawrence is 
uh, weak here and this, that and other. And one thing I've noticed in this whole build-up is that um, I'm very confident in myself and a lot of stuff that I've heard coming from their camp is based on me being less than. But I can say here that I'm in amazing shape and I'm coming to do a job. Well, that neatly brings in Shane McGuigan. What is it that you guys have have seen uh, and been talking about um, that you've seen in Lawrence that perhaps you don't feel that he's at 100%? I don't think he's not at 100%. We've been planning for him to be at 100%. Um, you know, I think that yeah, it's a world title opportunity. It's something that you can't turn down against a British fighter. And, um, you know, Chris winning on Saturday makes him, you know, a superstar, in my opinion. You know, it's especially down here, it's a, it's a guy that's the first time to bring a, a world title fight down to Bournemouth. And, you know, there's Arsen Gulamarin out there who's Armenian and stuff. And, you know, but then you've got another guy who's used to be in my gym, British guy, and it just creates an amazing story. So someone that we also know really well. And, you know, watching them spar countless rounds, they both had a lot of success. Just let's see who does it, who does it best with the, uh, with the small gloves on. Has it been an interesting dynamic, though, the fact that you took him to the top of the tree um, to become world champion and now you're plotting to bring him down and 300-plus rounds um, of sparring between the two? I, I sometimes wonder if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing that you know each other so well on both sides. I, I think it can only be a good thing uh, for, for you guys as fans because, you know, we know that Lawrence has been in certain fights that haven't been that exciting, whereas, I, you know, I know that Chris knows what, what he can't do against Lawrence and he can't fall into those traps. So that is going to create excitement. There's going to be a lot of live boxing out there. They both can bang. Um, and, yeah. Sugar Hill, welcome. Uh, welcome to Bournemouth. You've been preparing, obviously, uh, in probably in similar surroundings, I would say. Um, it's, it's still a body of work with Lawrence Okoli. What did we see against David Light that pleased you and what did you see that you went away and worked on that you think could be the difference in this fight particularly? Well, the, the fight with Lawrence Okoli and David Light, uh, I've stated that I gave Lawrence a seven and Lawrence gave himself a four, <laughs> which was, uh, was happy for me to hear just because um, he wants more. You know, we didn't have that much time together. Uh, a lot of things were new. And, uh, you know, if just for him to go out there and do everything that we worked on, it just wasn't consistent enough. And that's the reason why I gave him a seven and he gave himself a four. But he's not looking at it the way I look at it. He's looking at it like he wants to get better. And uh, to have that fight and to immediately come back into training, except the fight with, uh, with Chris here in his hometown, and, um, you know, it just shows that he wants to get better. I remember after the fight in the locker room, Lawrence was like, oh, man, I see. Like, I see he understands because it was moments in that fight where he should have and could have done things, but he didn't do it. And he understands. And, and for him wanting to get back in that gym right away, that means a lot, uh, you know, from the way I look at it and as a fighter, his personality and uh, his, his drive to want to be better. How does this fight go finally against Chris Bill and Smith from your perspective? Um, you know what? I, I've asked Lawrence about his sparring with, with Chris and pretty much all he, I didn't, he didn't give me much, but I was satisfied with what he gave me. He just gave me like a kind of a nod, a confident nod. And I was okay with that. So um, I know they sparred a lot together. I've been in the gym where guys have sparred numerous times and had to fight each other. Uh, it's only normal in boxing. Everybody's pretty much almost sparred everybody at some point in time coming up through amateurs and professionals and it, it all just counts on the night uh, it's up to those two fighters to, to to figure out what they can do to each other and what the other one can and cannot do on that night so this is just uh, one of those times where it's on the big stage which we're so happily happily appreciative of uh, with these two guys here uh, another thing I want to state is that I was here last year when Chris fought uh, Chamberlain and that was one of the most exciting fights I saw I was sitting ringside. So the crowd here is electric. I was, uh, I turned into a fan after that fight, uh, just sitting front row. And uh, the fans here in Bournemouth. Uh, I'll get you a t-shirt, Sugar, yeah? What's that? I'll get you a team t-shirt, yeah? No problem, <laughs> take it. Listen, I watched you fight and that was, it was a great fight. The fans were going crazy. Thank you, I appreciate it. Mean, I was sitting here and uh, just being around a person that can have the, the fans on their side and just that kind of electricity, it always just makes my blood, my, my skin just tingle just because of that excitement because you really don't get a lot of that in boxing. So for you to have this fight here, you fighting for the world championship, I know this place is gonna go crazy. 
and I'm excited to be a part of it and to just uh, you know to watch you and your journey and watch the people to support you and everything. Thank you, appreciate it. I'll invite both main event fighters to have one final say. What would you um, say to Lawrence? Your final message to him. Uh, thank you for, for for the opportunity. You know, it's uh, there's been a lot of bad things in boxing, but this is something that hasn't been totally spoken about in a good light enough. Is is this fight? It's two old old gym mates uh, fighting for a world title, two Brits fighting for a world title on a massive stage on a massive platform, um, and I think that in a, in a in a nutshell is what boxing should be about. Um, two guys who've never shied away from any fights in their careers, um, who know each other very well. Um, and Saturday night is going to be absolutely electric uh, and uh, definitely a night to remember. Well said. Lawrence, your final words? Uh, nothing crazy, just um, a point, you know, I'm coming to make an extremely um, big statement on the weekend. As much as I um, love and respect that the other side, I just think a lot of this stuff has been built up around um, destiny and world titles and Bournemouth and stuff like that, but I'm my own man on my own journey and there's stuff that I want and need and I'm ready to fight for it. So we're going to find out on the weekend what's what and who's who. Very well said. And Ben Shalom, last word to you. You've matched two of your cruiserweights together and um, you, know, you should be applauded for it. Yeah, it was a fight we never saw coming. And, uh, and credit to both guys, as Chris said. I think there's a lot that goes on in British boxing, but getting two British fighters fighting in a domestic world title in a voluntary defence in Chris Bill and Smith's hometown. It's something very, very special for the sport. Um, huge fights on the undercard for local lads as well, and it will be a very a big, big night to remember on Saturday night. Well said. Uh, we're going to break now for head-to-head. -head. Uh, just bear with us. We're going to clear the table so everyone can get a clear shot. Those at the front, just try not to stand up. So because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 